If you ever feel out of control around food, you're not alone, and you're in the right place to learn practical, no-nonsense information about why you binge and how to stop. Binge eating does not mean that something is wrong with you. It's a natural but primitive brain response that you can correct. If you're ready for change, sign up for the Brain Over Binge self-paced online course for less than $20 per month. And if you feel you need personalized support, we also offer one-on-one coaching and group coaching. To learn more, go to brainoverbinge.com forward slash subscribe. And I hope you enjoy the show. This is the Brain Over Binge podcast, where we share a simple brain-based approach to ending binge eating. I'm Katherine Hansen, and for those of you who are listening for the first time, I'm the author of Brain Over Binge and also my newer book, The Brain Over Binge Recovery Guide. I'm so glad to be here sharing information with you, along with master coach and author Cookie Rosenblum. And I want to mention that Cookie also has her own podcast where she talks about similar topics that may be really helpful to you. So, Cookie, I'm hoping you can tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. Thank you, Catherine. And I am also very happy to be here with all of you and help you leave the binge eating habit in the past and get on with your life. And I do have my own podcast, as Catherine mentioned. It's called Weight Loss Made Real. My focus is emotional eating and binge eating and just habitual overeating. And the reason we mention that right now is that we found through our one-on-one work with women and men, just like you who binge eat, that towards the end of their recovery, once they feel like they've been able to stop acting on these urges and they fade away, that then they are saying, okay, but now I'm eating too much and now I'm eating emotionally. How do I deal with that? And that's when we teach them the principles that I write about in my book. And my book is called Clearing Your Path to Permanent Weight Loss. And it it just kind of helps you uncover all the reasons why you may have failed in getting rid of some of those other eating habits. So that's something that you may not be interested right at this moment, but you can get a download of my book for free in the show notes. So take a look there when you're done listening to us. But in the meantime, let's focus on the binge eating habit and how we can help you just totally extinguish it. Thanks so much, Cookie. Yes, in this podcast, we're focusing specifically on ending the binge eating. We're sharing some key ideas that we hope will empower you to overcome this habit so that you can move on with your life. We're giving you all of the basics of the brain over binge approach, but know that if you want to dive deeper into these concepts, you can also do that through my books or by taking one of our courses. In this episode, we're going to continue our conversation about learning to dismiss the binge urges. We've talked about three of the five components of dismissing urges so far, and today we're going to talk about the fourth component, which is absolutely vital and the key to rewiring your brain. The fourth component is Stop acting on urges to binge. I want to stop for a minute here and mention that if you're listening to this podcast for the first time, you may be thinking that this sounds much too simple. You may be thinking, well, if I could stop acting on my urges to binge, I would be recovered by now. If this is your first time joining us, please know that the information we'll share today about Component 4 will make much more sense and seem much more doable in the context of everything we've discussed so far. So we encourage you to go back and listen to the previous episodes, or at least the last three episodes, which discuss components one through three. And if you've already listened to the previous episodes, you will understand why not acting on urges is absolutely possible, and how it is possible. So remember, component three last week was to stop reacting to the urge. And we talked about the different ways that you might react mentally, emotionally, and physically. Component four is to stop taking action. Stop acting on the urges to binge, meaning don't do it. Don't, don't follow the urge. So it's not pretending that the urge is not there. It's not acting on it. And the reason this is so important is that that's what allows your brain to change, not acting on them, allowing those urges to come up, seeing what they are, 
And when you don't act on them, you're changing a pathway in your brain. That's how you literally lose the habit of binging. It erases the habit, literally. So this is the cure for binge eating. And the way you are able to not act on the urge, we know it sounds simple, we know it may not be simple, but the way that you can do it is by following the three components that came before this, which we talked about in the three podcasts right before this one. So once you know that those urges, you know what they are, you understand that they're just neurological junk from a pathway that you created by acting on them again and again and again. You know that you're separate from them, right? And you're not reacting to them anymore, which we just talked about. Then not acting on them, not following them, not going into a binge, then it actually becomes possible. And there's nothing specific that you need to do in order to not act on binge urges. But we also want you to find what works best for you and what feels most comfortable for you and what feels the best for you to do during the times that binge urges are present because they are going to continue to be present because this is how your brain is conditioned right now. So for example, you can pick an activity to do while you're experiencing the binge urges, or you can choose from a list of several activities that you come up with beforehand. Alternately, you can just continue going about your day as if you're not experiencing an urge, meaning just keep doing what you had planned and what you were already doing. Or you can pause and sit or lie still and observe the urge with detachment. What's often very helpful is when you're doing this to keep track of your success and notice what works for you and what helps you be successful. When you focus on what works, then you can build from there and you can gain more confidence over time. Catherine, I love that you're saying what you need to do in order to not act because it reminds me of somebody in one of our group forums right now who just talked about the act of not acting. That's, you know, the action we want you to take is to not act, to not take action. One of the important things to consider is what do you expect? You know, what do you expect once you read these concepts, once you listen to us, once you've read the books, do you expect that it will just fade away and be very simple or that the urges may not come up again? We want you to have realistic expectations in that it may not feel easy all the time. Now, we're not saying it's going to be a struggle. But also, if you're feeling like this should just be a snap, now that I have the intellectual understanding, it shouldn't be a problem, that you may be surprised if it feels uncomfortable in taking these steps. And this discomfort is natural. It's a sign of going up against what you've always done in a new way. That's what happens when we change habits. There is always discomfort as a part of change, but you need to go through the discomfort until you get to comfort. So we want you to be aware and expect it, some level of discomfort, and be willing to go through it. And we also want you to look at the contrast because even though you nobody wants discomfort and we know you would wish it could be a different way. But the discomfort you experience when you don't act on the binge urge is temporary and it is much less painful than the discomfort that you're going to get if you act on the urge and you know what we're talking about, that post-binge discomfort. That lasts much longer and it's much more disruptive to your life and how you think about yourself. Try to remember that discomfort is normal it will pass, and it, it's actually a good sign that you're on your way heading in the right direction. That's right, and that's so important to see that acting on the urge is a lot more uncomfortable. I mean, that's why you're listening to this podcast. That's why you're trying to recover because it's causing so much pain in your life. And when you're not acting, like Cookie said, there might be some discomfort. But if you're practicing these components, if you're understanding them deeply, that should help relieve a lot of the discomfort. And you should be able to experience these urges with more of a detachment. And it won't be as uncomfortable for you. 
And remember that not acting on binge urges is a new skill that you're learning. And we want you to know that you may not always be perfect in using this new skill, especially when you're first starting. When learning the fourth component, I think the most common question is, what if I do act on a binge urge? Then what? Well, first of all, the most important thing is to avoid taking it as evidence that you're powerless and that you can't recover, because that's not the case at all. Binge eating only means that you acted on one binge urge. It doesn't mean you're destined to act on the next one or the one after that. And quite possibly, you may have only binged because you didn't recognize one thought. There could have just been one tempting thought that you didn't see as neurological junk and you followed it. And when you look at it this way, it feels a lot less overwhelming and it feels a lot less like evidence that you can't do this because you absolutely can. A binge doesn't mean you're back to square one. You can learn from it and you can move forward and you can recognize what happened and you can get stronger each time. And I would guess if you're listening right now that each time you've given in to that urge to binge, you probably at some point have told yourself something like, well, now I have to start all over again. And as Catherine just explained, you're never starting all over again because you already know things that you didn't know. And once you know something, once you see something, even if you're not where you want to be yet, you can't unknow it. You can't unsee it. So if you binge, we really urge you not to beat yourself up. It's absolutely unhelpful to do that. Actually, when you get upset, when you have any strong emotion, that just makes that pathway in your brain a little bit stronger. So don't be upset if you've gotten upset in the past. Don't be upset with yourself for being upset. But going forward, just try instead, if you do give in to that urge and you do binge, to just calmly, when you get to a place of calm, look back and work backwards, and look where you might have done something different. Look at the point of decision where you decided, it's an act of decision if you decided to go into the binge. Look where you might have had other choices. Look to see whether maybe you were not recognizing the voice urging you to go into a binge. And make a commitment to yourself to move forward And be more aware next time. But please don't waste any time or energy beating yourself up. This is just a new way of looking at things and a new way of not doing something. So, of course, you're going to fall down. You are going to make mistakes. You are going to give in sometimes. It's part of the process. It's natural. Yes, Cookie, that is so helpful. We want you to remember that everyone recovers on their own timeline. Some people are able to stop acting on the urges very quickly. And it takes some people much longer to really feel separate from the urges and capable of dismissing them. And it may take a lot of, like Cookie said, falling down and getting back up and learning to do things differently. And that's perfectly okay. So please accept where you are in this process and just keep making progress. Keep learning more about the components and keep practicing and you will get where you want to be. That wraps up today's show and we hope it's been very helpful to you. Next time we'll talk about the fifth and final component of dismissing urges to binge. Whether you're new to this podcast or you are a regular listener, we want to thank you for being here. We also want to tell you that you can learn more about Cookie and myself through the links in the show notes. Each of us offers a free ebook like we've mentioned. And also, when you subscribe, you can receive our newsletters and important updates and information that we send out that we hope can be helpful and inspirational in your continued commitment to recovery. And when you receive our newsletters, be on the lookout, because some of you may do well just reading the books, and some of you may do really well with this little tidbits of information from the podcast. But a lot of you might have further questions and you might want to know how to apply these concepts to your case specifically in your experience, in your life. And if you do, then periodically we're going to let you know when we're having a class that would be helpful to you. And we we also have a support group for after the class where you'll still be in touch with us and still be able to talk to us and ask us more personalized questions. 
So we hope that helps. But please remember our motto, and that is, if anyone can do this, then you can too. And we hope you'll join us next time on the Brain Over Binge podcast. And for now, this is Catherine and Cookie reminding you that you have the power to rewire your brain and live a binge-free life. The Brain Over Binge podcast is produced and recorded by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC. All work is copyrighted by Brain Over Binge Recovery Coaching, LLC, and all rights are reserved. As a disclaimer, the hosts of the Brain Over Binge podcast are not professional counselors or licensed healthcare providers, and this podcast is not a substitute for medical advice or any form of professional therapy. Eating disorders can have serious health consequences, and you are strongly advised to seek medical attention for matters relating to your health. Please get help when you need it, and good luck on your journey. Need more help? You can find all of our current and upcoming options for support at brainoverbinge.com.